We move now to the sphere. More than a month after opening, Las Vegas's newest landmark continues attracting global attention for its contributions to both architecture and entertainment. And here now to expand on its influence in these areas are Glenn N. P. Nowak, an associate professor of architecture at UNLV, and John Katzlametis, entertainment reporter for the Las Vegas Review Journal. Gentlemen, welcome to Nevada Week. Thanks for having me. Okay, so tech billionaire Elon Musk described the sphere as exquisite beyond words. That's when he visited here recently, put that out on X, formerly known as Twitter. For each of you, and I'll start with you, John, because you reported about his mm -hmm. visit there. Is his description justified? Uh, half of it is justified, the exquisite part. It can't be beyond words because we still have more words to write about it <laughs> and to explain it. So it has to be, that, I, that's what I've been saying. He's got the exquisite part right, but as far as beyond words, you know, we can't uh, say anything's beyond words. But I was impressed that he was there and, uh, and that he was so uh, forthright in his assessment of it. You know, this is a man who's seen, seen a lot in his, his life and career. So, right. Yeah. Uh, Glenn? Um, for Elon Musk to say it's beyond words, I, I think is really important. Uh, it, it reminds me of, my dad's saying that talking about music is like dancing about architecture. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. here John and I are, we're gonna to try to talk about this and uh, to, to put this into words is really difficult, but we're gonna, we're gonna give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Let's start with each of your lines of work. What makes the sphere special in the entertainment world? Um, I think what I've been saying about the sphere since I've uh, experienced the two uh, ticketed shows Postcard from Earth and, and the U2 concert is, it's a lot. And that means that covers everything. It's a lot of uh, technology, a lot of entertainment value, a lot of effort, a lot of uh, cost for the consumer and for the, and for the developers. Um, I think in this city, when you can bring something that is truly groundbreaking that nobody's ever seen before, you've really achieved something today because I've seen everything that comes, comes through Las Vegas in the last quarter century. And I've never seen anything like this. So I think from an entertainment standpoint, it's, um, it's doing something that nobody has done before at, a, at this scale. And the next step to me will be how they can move forward with different programming, different music acts, and sustain the momentum. But as far as what they've done right now, the entertainment facet of it is, has met the hype. I wonder about the future performers there and how much pressure they now have on them in terms of set design to come up with something spectacular. I mean, mm -hmm. what do you have to do to be able to perform there and do it justice? That's, uh, I think that's one reason we haven't seen a second band or a second act announced is there is that requirement. You know, it's more than just being able to sell tickets. It's having to achieve what U2 has been able to achieve with Octung Baby um, in their, you know, in their production show, which is, uh, do you want to be the second act to come in there and falter? You know, you have got to have a lot, you have to have a lot of money behind, you have to have a lot of ingenuity, you have to be able to reach uh, a lot of fans over multiple generations. And um, I, I, f I think that we will see somebody do something uh, very different from what U2 has achieved. I've heard like Fish, for example, the jam band will come in and they'll do something entirely different than what U2 has achieved with, a, with an unbroken video display all throughout rather than each number being uh, a, a production unto itself. But it's a very good question and I think that that is a, a factor in why they have not announced one or two more residency productions is, is that that requirement. Yeah. You, you two has extended. Glenn? I, I think there is some pressure associated with it, but I would also imagine it has artists really excited that they are now rethinking how to how to put on a show, mm -hmm. that uh, this is a, a brand new medium and it's going to change the way uh, music is presented, the way film is presented. Um, and I think it's also, uh, getting architects to think very differently about how we integrate digital technology. I think one thing that really makes the sphere special is that it's arguably the most comprehensive integration of architectural form and digital technology. We've seen big screens before, but it hasn't affected people the same way that we see, you know, people will line up on the sidewalk or, or crowd the median just to get a view 
of the sphere because it's doing something that that we haven't seen in architecture before. Uh, it's also, I think, going to change the way uh, we see urban development springing up around the sphere. Uh, everybody from you know, hundreds of hotel rooms, thousands of hotel rooms have a unique view now, and they're making those rooms more valuable, more desirable. And so as, as the city builds up around the sphere, I think it's going to influence the way future buildings are, are built. How difficult was the sphere to build? I, I trust it was one of the most difficult construction projects of the last century. Um, they've, they've undoubtedly had to sort of reinvent or, or uh, come up with new ways of constructing because it's, it's the largest sphere on the planet. Um, and not just big in terms of its physical size, we can take a tape measure to it and confirm that it is in fact bigger than any other uh, uh, spherical structure. It's heavier, you know, we can crunch those numbers um, and, and quantitatively tell you it's big. Um, but it's also qualitatively a sphere, a space that creates uh, an experience unlike anything else. So I, I think that's also, uh, you know, back to trying to uh, express this in words, we, we can maybe get close to conveying how exceptional this, this building is, but until you actually go and experience it, that's what makes architecture such a, a fun art and science that, you know, you can describe it in many objective terms, but until you actually mm -hmm. walk into a space and understand how it all comes together, that's, that's the magic of, of what's happening at the sphere. Yeah, a hundred percent on that. It is very difficult to explain what the sphere is until you've actually been there and, and to convey that feeling. I, I go back to the, uh, the third song in the U2 show is um, even better than the real thing, okay? and they bring a montage of Las Vegas images over the top of, it starts here and it comes over uh, in front of you and you're sitting in a fixed position. It's every Las Vegas cliche ever, <laughs> multifold. Everybody's on this thing. Elvis, uh, Siegfried and Roy show girls, Wayne Newton, all of them. Um, Austin Butler is Elvis. The Rat Pack splashed across this thing, the strip. And as it's coming down, you're watching it come down and. And when it gets to about this point, and the band's raging, they're playing the song, you feel like you're coming back. You f your body tells you you're, c you're moving up as this is moving down. And I grabbed the seat in front of me. I, I held onto it. And others were doing the same thing. And I was looking at I had some, for a couple of friends in front of me. And they turned around and they're like, we're all and I'm like, whoa, we, were, we didn't move. We, this is not moving. And we were, our minds were telling us that that was what was going on. I had not had that kind of feeling in a a concert production ever. So this is an example of what you have to be aware of and you gotta be ready for yeah. what's coming next in the sphere for a postcard and the U2 yeah. show. And, and that's the, the exactly what you're talking about. Uh, could this, you bring up the Vegas cliches, could this have debuted in any other city besides Las Vegas? I mean, obviously it could have, but why Las Vegas is a good home? Or is it? Well. James Dolan, James Dolan's answer, the developer, the man who's, who's founded it, his answer to that is, is Las Vegas was a willing partner from the beginning, you know. Um, he had a, a well-received audience with the um, casino executives in town and the elected officials who saw this and said, if we can make a difference, let's, let's commit to it and then we'll work out the details later. He could not do this in New York, where he lives. James Dolan said, because there's, well, there's, there's um, space limitations, there's right. bureaucratic limitations. And you know, his, his relationship with the, the people who would approve this is, is not uh, particularly, uh, you know, it's not a particularly inviting conversation for them. There's, yeah. and, and where do you, it's exactly, where do you put this and how and, much is it gonna cost there? The Las Vegas community really understands that this town was built on entertainment. And so there's, I think, a willingness to to accept this as a as a design challenge, um, as a an opportunity to capitalize on a lot of uh, d 
design and construction expertise that is right here in Las Vegas. Um, you know, the, the construction workers were, were undoubtedly, uh, you know, part of what made Jim Dolan's sketch come to life. You know, it's one, mm -hmm. it's one thing to dream it up, but then you get some of the, uh, the best experts in their respective fields all coming together, architecture, engineering, construction, management, um, and that's really what it takes. And that's, that's what Las Vegas has sort of proven over, over the last several decades. You know, some of the biggest, most expensive structures on earth, uh, you know, privately funded or, or not, are right here in Las Vegas. And so there's this track record of, of showing that we can make these sorts of things happen. Yeah, yeah. And I wanted to ask you about Postcard mm -hmm. from Earth. Yes. Um, that is a project of Darren Aronofsky, yep. the director of movies like The Wrestler, mm -hmm. uh, Black Swan. Mm -hmm. his, the Whale. The mm -hmm. Whale. His willingness to work on a project like this with the sphere, what does that say about the sphere? Well, they wanted somebody who had artistic credibility in a theatrical concept. Uh, context, first of all, and he was hot at the time when they, you know, he, he had just done The Whale, um, which led to a, an Academy Award for Brendan Fraser as Best Actor, and somebody who was willing to, um, you know, uh, embrace the new technology, the camera technology that they're using has never been used before, and what impressed me about Postcard, it's about a 60 minute, 50 to 60 minute experience in there, is it is, a, it is um, it's not just a visual, uh, you know, uh, conveyor belt, of scenes around the world, it has a message in it. There's a through line, a storyline about uh, uh, conservation and sustainability and protecting our planet that runs through this the, this uh, theatrical experience, which I think it, uh, d takes a lot of, of guests unexpected. You know, they're, they don't expect that to be the case in something like the Sphere. But um, the postcard from Earth is going to be the driver of um, revenue in an, from the entertainment side of this, more so than U2. U2 takes a lot of the, t you know, the, the vast majority of ticket sales go to the band. But postcard is running up to four times a day, 5,000 capacity, about 48 to 5,000 people each showing. And, that, and it's a fixed, uh, you know, static production. So they just run it, run it, run it, and that's going to be the, the message of the sphere will be delivered that way over time, at least a year, and, and uh, that's where the, the money's going to come from. Glenn, have you thought about whether other schools of architecture are going to start talking about Las Vegas architecture as a result of the sphere? Absolutely, and they're going to, they're going to talk about it a lot differently. Uh, for, for many years, schools have taken fleeting interests in Las Vegas uh, from as far back as uh, Denise Scott Brown and Robert Venturi when they wrote Learning from Las Vegas. Um, but these are often architecture students that, that spend a couple days or a week uh, on a field trip in Las Vegas trying to understand uh, what makes Las Vegas Las Vegas. And uh, what we're seeing is our, our students at, at UNLV are able to really fully immerse themselves in the built environment. Uh, we just took a field trip of about 20 students to the sphere. Uh, we saw a uh, postcard from Earth and, and the lessons learned and understanding how this starts to change uh, you know, everything, not just the strip, but it's now starting to draw tourists off the strip. It's bringing locals around uh, the the spectacle, the phenomenon of the of the sphere. I think now architecture uh, students everywhere are going to look at Las Vegas a little more fully, understanding that there's a whole lot more to it than than just the single boulevard. The last time each of you received this kind of hype around the opening of a building in Las Vegas, when was that? I would say it's, it was probably city center. I think, if, when you take everything together, because it was it, City Center opened in the face of a, a serious uh, recession, there were a lot of naysayers about the scale and scope of that, if it was even going to come to fruition. It was a real test of where, where we're going to get to the finish line. The sphere reminds me a lot of the discussion of that, you know, 
what are we doing? You know, a lot of people are like, you know, the, the cost kept escalating, the, the, the um, opening kept moving, you know, according to Supply conditions. Supply chain issues because of COVID. Definitely, yeah. And, and so that's what it reminds me of, um, you know, and, and incremental openings, you know, also spheres open, you know, in different, you know, with different productions. But, um, you know, as I think about the sphere and all that planning, and this may be, Glenn, I can ask you about this, Glenn, is, um, in the U2 show, they have um, obstructed view seats. I don't know if you guys have heard about this. Not, mm -hmm. It's not evident in postcards because they don't sell the, that lower le seated level, right. the 100. But the 200 level comes over the top of the 100 level, about halfway, all the way around. And I'm wondering from an architectural strategy and execution standpoint, how that would happen. Is that something? What do you think of that concern in a place that has had so much thought and resource and planning as the sphere? Have you studied that at all or looked into yeah, I'm, that? Yeah, I'm not sure if, if that was going to be a known issue at the time of construction or if it's simply um, you know, part of the process. Not every seat is equal, right? Mm. There, there are ideal seats in every venue around the world. You want to be in this location or that. Mm -hmm. um, and consequently, that's why we see you know, different, different tier pricing. So, yeah. um, you know, they've 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 acknowledged that you know some seats are better than others, mm -hmm. and and I think you you learn from those if if and when if or when we see another sphere built, uh, you know that might be one of the subtle adjustments that is made. Yeah, I, I would guess that they would look at that. I'm just wondering how your students, if that was ever discussed when they did their field trip about that particular um, issue, because it came up late. And for somebody who studied, who's in, in the field, I was just curious about what they would uh, last, think of it. Last question, what are we going to be saying about the sphere in 30 years, Glenn? Well, I, I think it'll, it'll be remembered uh, this day, the, the, this uh, season of its opening and all of the hype. Um, we'll quickly be able to recall, just like John did when City Center opened, or um, you know, I would I would also think uh, Lou Ruvo is is mm -hmm. one of those. You know, we have mm -hmm. moments where we have brought star architects in to build buildings, but uh, this is this is definitely unique. I think we'll we'll say the sphere made us think very differently about our built environment, particularly because of the content in in postcard from Earth, but also because it's such a game changer. In, in technology integrated into architectural form. We have run out of time, gentlemen. Do you want to add something real quick? Change the face of the strip forever. July 4th, when they uh, did the exosphere display, was the beginning of that. Change the face of how the strip looks. John Katz, thank you. Glenn Nowak, thank you for joining us.